I think the reason there are so many violin concertos is that the violin is able to sonically soar above the orchestra. And that has a very unique, beautiful sound. But I really wanted to understand what is it about the famous violin concertos that makes them great? And I think it's because they're not just beautiful and not just fast with razzle-dazzle, but I think it's because they have this other crucial ingredient, which I call storytelling. The concerto, the score, immediately spoke to me uh, in a very positive manner. Uh, and precisely because of this, it's like um, a narrative. There is a very strong narrative throughout the concerto. And it is in both the interplay between the violin and the orchestra, uh, which really changes actually. It starts somewhere out of nowhere and, and, and the violin makes a, an entrance. It's not necessarily a grand entrance uh, uh, with, with a lot of um, fireworks, but it's a character coming on the stage and then it develops. one particular moment in the middle of the concerto where I feel that really comes to fruition and it's so special because it's so simple and so honest and that is actually the second thing that, the, uh, that spoke to me, the honesty and sincerity in Todd's writing. One of the sections that I was concerned about, and I think Tosca a little bit too, was some of the arpeggios that go by at a very fast speed, and they're not necessarily easy to play. There are definitely challenging parts, but challenging and rewarding. So you know that it, it is for a reason. It is in service of the music. One of the things that Tosca and I were talking about was how some of the famous concertos like the Tchaikovsky or the Beethoven were at first thought to be unplayable. I didn't want to have anything in this concerto that was so difficult that it would just take years and years to learn. So we went through everything. That's always the thing, right? You get a score. Uh and until someone has done it, <laughs> uh, in theory, you don't really know, is this possible? There is this very exciting rhythmical part. It happens twice. One really needs to be on the edge of, of one's seat and with full focus to be exactly uh, together to convey that rhythmic excitement. It was actually a lot of fun. For, for all of us <laughs> to record these two sections. And we were, during the recording, discovering new ways of performing it, um, new ways of, of approaching a phrase, um, and also, actually, Todd and I uh, got together before the recording and we were discussing some things in the cadenza. Double stops, harmonics, the cadenzas, we spent quite a bit of time. But with the harmonics, I had indicated quite a few and I'm not a violinist, so I would imagine various notes 
being played as a harmonic because I love that the sound of that. Certain harmonics would work really well, but others not so much, and Tosca would suggest a different fingering or maybe a different combination of notes for a particular double stop. And that was just an amazing kind of teamwork. The composer can only set the stage. It's really up to the performer to lift the notes off the page. There is a lot of material and Todd is very clear in the notation. And at the same time, there is enough room to interpret. Uh, and, and make it one's own, so for, for the interpreters, and, and I have really enjoyed that.